This is an example of a positive aggregate demand shock. So the question is, consider an economy at equilibrium according to ISLM model. Draw the three figures representing the goods market, the money market, the ISLM space, all in equilibrium. Draw appropriate connections between the three figures to capture that both markets are in equilibrium. Label all axes, curves, and equilibrium values. Label the each equilibrium with an A. We will start by drawing the three markets of goods market, money market, and ISLM market. Let's start by drawing the y-axis in the goods market, which is our aggregate demand, and the x-axis, which is our output. Then let's draw our y-axis in the money market, which is the real interest rate, and the x-axis, which is the money demand. Then we will draw the y-axis in ISLM, which is the real in straight, and the x-axis, which is output. You'll discover that here we have the same output. Here we have the same real in straight. In the goods market, we will draw output as an upward 45 degree line. And then we'll draw the upward aggregate demand curve. The point of intersection is the equilibrium, which we will label as point A. We will draw a vertical dotted line to reflect the equilibrium output in the goods market and ISLM model. In the money market, we will draw the real money supply as a vertical line and the downward money demand. The point of intersection is the equilibrium, which we will label as A. Then we will draw a horizontal dotted line to reflect the equilibrium real in straight in the money market and ISLM model. If we check the ISLM model, we'll discover that we have a point of R1 and Y1. This will be our equilibrium point, which we will label as A. Then we will draw our downward IS curve and the upward LM curve to intersect at the point A. Now, from the three markets, we can see that all of them are at equilibrium. The goods market is at equilibrium at point A, the money market is at equilibrium at point A, and the ISLM model is at equilibrium at point A. Then, part B, which market is directly impacted by this event? This will be referred to as the primary affected market. As we see in our scenario here, we have a higher consumer optimism. Therefore, it would result in higher consumption, which means it will affect our aggregate demand curve, which means we'll have a higher aggregate demand curve. Consequently, it will affect our goods market, this market. The next part of our question is, which parameter in the primary affected market is affected by this event? We said we will have a higher consumption as a result of higher consumer optimism. The next part of the question, what curve in the primary affected market is affected by this event and how does the curve change? We said because higher consumption, it would result in higher aggregate demand. Therefore, aggregate demand will shift upward. Next part, include the change in your graph clearly indicates the direction of change with arrows and by labeling the new curve, label the new equilibrium point B1 in the market. Since we have a positive shock in the goods market, such as an increase in consumer optimism, this would result in a higher consumption and consequently higher aggregate demand. So aggregate demand curve will shift upward and we will label it as aggregate demand 2. We will get a new equilibrium point, which is the point of intersection between aggregate demand 2 and the 45 degree line, which is our output. We will label the new equilibrium point as point B. Next part of the question. Which curve in the ISLM space is affected by the shift to B1? Which way does it shift? So we will draw a dotted vertical line to reflect the new equilibrium output, which is Y2 in the goods market and ISLM model. Since aggregate demand increase, this will shift the IS curve to the right in the ISLM model. The IS curve will shift to the right crossing the point of Y2 and R1, which we label as B1. The shift in IS curve to the right crossing the point B1. Then the next part of the question is, include the change on your graph clearly indicates a new curve with an appropriate label and with arrows, which we did already here, which means IS curve will 
shift to the point of B1, which means R1 and Y2. Part H. Does the event in the primarily affected market have a secondary effect in other markets? Definitely yes. Next part of the question. If yes, which curve is affected and which direction does it shift? We know that here we have a higher output because of higher aggregate demand. Consequently, because of higher output, it would result in higher transaction motive because people will get higher income. Consequently, they would like to demand more money. Therefore, the demand for money curve will shift upward because they started to consume more. Therefore, output increase from Y1 to Y2. This will increase the money demand in the money market based on the transaction motive. In order to get R2, we need to find the intersection between Y2 and LM curve. We will label this point as B2. Then we will draw a horizontal line crossing B2 in order to get the new real interest rate in post ISLM model and money market. We will label the point of intersection between the real money supply and R2 in the money market as point B. Money demand curve will shift upward crossing the point B in the money market in order to reflect the increase in output from Y1 to Y2 based on the transaction motive. Now the goods market is at equilibrium at point B because we have an intersection between aggregate demand and output level. The money market is at equilibrium at point B as well. But the ISLM model is not at equilibrium because ISLM are not intersecting at point P2. Then label the final equilibrium for both the goods and money markets and the ISLM space at C. The equilibrium point in the ISLM model is the point of intersection between IS2 and LM. We will label this point as C. Then we will draw a dotted vertical line to reflect the new equilibrium output as Y3 in post ISLM model and the goods market. The point of intersection between Y3 and the 45 degree line, the output line, in the goods market will be our new equilibrium point, which we'll label as point C. From the money market, the money demand curve shifted upward, resulting in a higher interest rate from R1 to R2. So because of higher interest, this would result in a lower investment based on rounding out effect. Consequently, aggregate demand will shift downward to aggregate demand 3, crossing point C. This would result in lower output at Y3. From the ISLM model, we will draw a dotted horizontal line crossing point C in order to reflect the new equilibrium real in straight as R3 in both ISLM model and the money market. The point of intersection between R3 and the money supply curve is in the money market will be the new equilibrium point which we'll label as point C. From the goods market, the aggregate demand curve shifted downward resulting in a lower output from Y2 to Y3 which would result in a decline in the money demand in the money market based on the transaction motive. Therefore, our money demand curve will shift downward to intersect at point C. Now the three markets are at equilibrium. The goods market is at equilibrium at point C, the money market is at equilibrium at point C, and the ISLM model is at equilibrium at point C. Then, what would be an appropriate fiscal policy response in order to keep the economy at Y1? What would be the consequence of policy on R and I? Okay, here, what's our original scenario? We have higher consumer optimism. This would result in higher consumption, which would result in higher aggregate demand, which would result in higher output. In order to return back to our original output by using the fiscal policy, what we need to do is we need to decrease G or increase taxes, which would result in lower aggregate demand. This lower aggregate demand will shift IS curve to the original one. Consequently, our output will decrease and our interest will decrease. So we return back to our original output and original interest. Once we decrease our interest, what will happen is our investment will be higher, which we call it a reverse crowding out. So simply you could say that in our original scenario, what happened? Aggregate demand increased by a higher rate, but because this resulted in higher interest, therefore aggregate demand will retract back again. And that's why it will reach equilibrium here. Next part. 
What would be an appropriate monetary policy in response to keep the economy at Y1? What would be the consequence of policy on R&R? Okay, we would like to decrease aggregate demand in order to offset the increase in aggregate demand. So what we're going to do is we will decrease money supply, which would result in higher interest rate. Consequently, LM will shift to the left. Therefore, we'll have a lower output, a higher interest. Consequently, higher interest would result in lower investment, which we call it crowding out effect. The last point is what would be an appropriate monetary policy response in order to keep the interest rate at R1? What would be the consequence of the policy on Y? So here we would like to keep it at R1. So what we're going to do in this example, what we need to do is we need to increase money supply. If we increase money supply, which is the opposite to the previous point, it would result in lower interest. Lower interest would result in higher LM, which means LM will shift to the right. Consequently, it would result in higher output. This would result in lower interest. Consequently, the lower interest would result in higher investment, which we call reverse crowding out effect.